I'm sitting here in the Brill offices in Leiden and I'm talking to Dr. Graham Dunphy of the University of Regensburg. Graham is the 2012 Brill Scarlager Fellow in Leiden and he's also the editor of Brill's Encyclopedia of the Medi Medieval Chronicle. Um, Graham, how did the modern interest in chronicles begin? When did it begin? What were the catalysts? Well, chronicles, of course, they've been kind of the talk, stock and trade of, of historians for what well, they always have been. But I think you can see that something new happened around about the 1980s and 90s when people in the literary disciplines started to notice them. Uh, I myself started my doctorate in, in German studies, medieval German studies, at the beginning of the 1990s and I was taking a, a German chronicle uh, and looking at it as, as a text, as a, um, as a piece of literature and became aware that quite a few other people uh, in English studies and French studies were doing the same thing about the same time and it felt kind of new at that time for us in our disciplines to start looking at chronicles in this way. Um, and just about that time Eric Cooper in Utrecht uh, had the idea of bringing together people from different disciplines, all the literary disciplines but also the historians and, and other disciplines as well, for a conference which was held in Utrecht. And uh, there were also art historians there which was very interesting for, uh, for us uh, because from our text that we've been working with you wouldn't actually be able to tell that the manuscripts of these chronicles have pictures in them and the art historians were focused on those uh, and maybe hadn't um, paid so much attention to some of the, the text related things that we were interested in. We had a very interesting and fruitful um, interchange there but you know there were theologians there as well and um, a whole range of different disciplines. Uh, and that conference went so well that it was decided to have another one three years later and then there was another one three years later and uh, that, um, that gradually became a society. And when, did the, when was the society founded? It was founded at the third uh, conference in 2002, I think. Um, uh, that was the third Utrecht conference. And after that, the conferences they continued every three years, but this started to become peripatetic. We had one in Reading and in Belfast, and then we were over in Hungary last, last summer. What, when did the decision uh, come about, or the idea come up, to produce an encyclopedia on the Medieval Chronicle? What was, the ge what was its genesis? Its genesis was at the second conference, where I was sitting at the back of uh, a lecture. Actually, I think it was a paper by one of the, the French studies um, colleagues, uh, and I just became aware there was such a large number of these texts I had no idea how I could ever begin to get an overview of them, and uh, I was almost struggling to get an overview of my own field. There are a lot of them in German studies, but to know what's happening in Italy and Spain, that was uh, that was just beyond me. And I became aware that the colleagues in, in Spanish studies had also no idea what was going on in Northern Europe, uh, and we had a couple of conversations about this, and I realised that some kind of reference work where we all gathered our our basic knowledge and uh, tried to make it available to each other. That was going to be a, a very useful resource. It was actually out of that need that the, the encyclopedia started. And did you have any idea at the time how big the encyclopedia could be or would be or what sort of task you were taking on? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Um, that might well have scared me, <laughs> actually, because it has become rather a, a, rather a large thing. But uh, I, I very much enjoyed doing it. Um, in the process of Working at this encyclopedia, we've we've had cooperation with colleagues uh, from oh twenty discipl different disciplines, and uh, and that's really very exciting. We're ten years on from the uh, uh, two thousand and two uh, conference where this idea came up, and the encyclopedia does now exist. Mm -hmm. um, what sort of role do you think the encyclopedia may might play in Chronicles uh, studies? Where do you think chronicle studies are going at the moment? Oh, well, chronicle studies are going forward in so many different directions, it's, it's difficult to give a simple answer to that because now there are so many people working on, uh, on things. 
Um, there are a lot of areas where we need new text editions, but um, what I'm also seeing is a lot of very exciting interdisciplinary work going on. Um, the encyclopedia is, is really a, a first point of reference for anybody wanting to get into something. It's, um, uh, it's just, just pointing the direction. Um, uh, chronicle studies was once seen as a very Dutch area, at least the, the, the Dutch seem to have uh, been uh, the catalysts for, for much of the modern work. Where do you see chronicle studies developing uh, now? Uh, for example, we had uh, uh, some uh, entries in the current encyclopedia on uh, Arabic and Islamic sources. Do you see uh, Arabists and Hebraicists, uh, sorry, and Hebraicists and others who are dealing not dealing with Western Europe, working on this sort of material? Yes, uh, that's been very interesting actually because it was, I think from about the third Chronicle conference, I became aware of. Um, I became aware of Arabists there, and it was the first time I was ever aware of uh, people from the European literary disciplines actually um, having this interchange with, uh, with people working in Islamic studies. Uh, and I get the impression that the Islamic area is one that is going to grow because they have a very big chronicle tradition, and they don't seem to me to be as far on with, with studying it, but they're becoming interested in it. And you mean far on, you mean purely the study? Do they have the basic materials for study? They also lack texts. Mm. Uh, they lack text editions. Um, they even lack access to the, the manuscripts. I, I've noticed that the manuscripts tend to be in... Well, many of them are uh, in the libraries of mosques and they, they don't even have shelf marks and they're, they're, they're somewhere in Africa. I don't know how you would get to that, mind you. It's not my field. So uh, there are probably ways around that, uh, but I certainly have the impression that they have much greater difficulty getting access to the material, uh, and that would be that would be for them one of the, the big focuses in the years ahead, just to make the, the actual texts available. Talking about the availability of texts, much material is now uh, available online, the uh, source material at least. Um, do you see uh, the? the uh, 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 an impetus from within the society for organising the uh, edition online of that sort of material? I think there's a great deal of potential for online editions. Scholars still are pretty wedded to the, uh, the paper text, uh, uh, but we all understand that there are, um, there are great advantages of getting things out uh, electronically as well. And yes, I see, I see more and more people being interested in well, thank you very much. The encyclopedia itself will be available electronically uh, in the next uh, through three months in June 2012. Um, let's hope that that will also give a further impetus to the start of very successful uh, development of chronicle studies in in, in the, of the last 20 years. Thank you, Mary. Thank you.